This is the Solidad Lansdale, voted best in class two years running by the automotive journalists of B, the two-wheel drive of 96 and the four-wheel drive of 99. Solidad's Kansai engineering allows you to carry seven in Solidad comfort and Solidad style and with Solidad before... Oh my God! By the turn of the millennium, the Lansdale had seen widespread adoption by an army of middle-class families. It served multiple uses, such as taking your son to soccer practice, your daughter to a play date, and your husband to the bar in order for him to forget his awful purchase. If you rocked up to any grocery store across America on a Saturday morning, you'd be greeted by the garish sight of a sea of land whales across the parking lot. It truly lived up to their MVP, multi-purpose vehicle classification. The police got in on the action too. The land whale helped them upkeep their lame reputation, and the large cabin was great for transporting policey bits like traffic cones and evidence. However, they did find one fault with the land whale, being its ability to catch crooks. With just an 11% car chase success rate, the Lansdale was relegated to roadblock duty. F*** you, Utah. If you're dumb enough to buy a new car this weekend, you're a dumb enough schmuck to come to West Rock Motors. Bad deals, cars that break down, and thieves. If you think you're going to find a bargain at West Rock, you can kiss my ass. Right now, we have their ever Solidad Lansdale for the high, high price of $10,000. If you can find a better deal, you can shove it up your ass. As the years tumbled by, the Lansdale was forgotten by the middle class and emergency services and demoted to the second-hand market, where the pompous lifestyle it once led was replaced with being a lower class workhorse. The Landwell found itself in a few new positions of work, most notably as a van. The rear seats, carpets and headliners were ripped out to reveal a bare chassis, and the backmost windows were replaced with panels. This was something that was unheard of in the US, and mostly still is. The Lansdale cargo never found widespread adoption, although if you were lucky, you could spot cargos being ragged around work sites. In larger cities, it was also a prime candidate for taxi ranks. The spacious and relatively luxurious cabins made the Landwell a favourite amongst cabbies. However, anyone wanting to recreate scenes from the crazy taxi video games was in for a real shot, as the Lansdale taxi didn't have a single sporty bone in its body. Unlike the Lansdale Sport, in comparison, this spec was a monster. Its four driven wheels, powered by a 3.8 litre gas guzzler, meant this people carrier could get up to some serious speeds if it had a long enough stretch of road. Fathers that had to sell their sports saloon because they produced three or more children bought up the sport like hotcakes. Although this already obese vehicle, travelling at serious speeds, fully laden with child, was a recipe for disaster. It was at this point the Lansdale reached rock bottom and was starting to gain a reputation as a beater. By 2010, cleanish examples could be picked up online for less than a thousand bucks. Luckily for the Landwell, however, the timing was impeccable. Social media was picking up, and some motoring channels were starting to buy them as cheap, funny cars to modify. What's going on YouTube? We just finished modifying our Solidad Landy dude. Of course, we got it on the steelies, and we've cut the springs. That is some budget starts right there. With the boat on top, it looks fresh. And under the hood, rev it, chow, rev it. Oh, that's first gear, man, come on. Under the hood, we've got an eBay supercharger. It cost about 300 bucks, dude. Anyway, we're gonna rip it now and see how she goes. 
First pull in the landy. Oh my god, it pulls, dude. It pulls. All right, guys. So it looks like we blew up the engine. Uh, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Most notably on the west coast, they were turned into a petrol head's guilty pleasure. Lansdales were cropping up at meets all over, with thousand dollar low rider paint jobs, three spoke wheels and xenon headlights. The Lansdales quickly became a family friendly tuner with varying levels of success. And if you were lucky, you could even catch them in the street racing scene. but not for very long before they all understeered into the closest lamppost. But perhaps more favourably for Soledad as a company, on the east coast they were being turned into rockets. Drag, time attack and rally builds were the new standard for a cheap home built racing car. The option of both front and all wheel drive made it a favourite amongst racers. With a bolt on turbo kit, the once dreary 2.5 litre inline 4 was converted into a playful high revving engine. It didn't handle too badly either, despite its large size. With all the luxury gump removed it was relatively nimble. Paired with a decent suspension kit, the large chassis didn't seem to be much of an issue, especially with a competent driver behind the wheel. Land whales started cropping up in racing series across America, met with minor success, even when compared to more traditional racing cars. Coming on to the final lap here now, will the Covert retain his lead? He defends hard, cutting off any possibility of passing through the S's. The Lansdale is itching to get past going onto the straight. This will be one of the great David and Goliath battles. The Solidad goes too wide. The hatchback is on the outside going into the turn. Contact! It's getting dirty out there as the Lansdale is literally being pushed up the hill now. And oh no, the minivan is off the track. There's absolutely no room for that in motorsport. Any clean examples that had miraculously survived the onslaught it has endured for the last 20 years was immediately sold off to their demise. 